Can the UK rebuild its credibility and trust with EU countries, with our EU uh, partners, and, and how? Thank you. Um, first answer goes to Julie, Labour, thank you. Yes, by making sure that Brexit Party doesn't top the polls on May the 23rd. I feel as if I spend all my time mending broken relationships. I have worked, I am one of the top three British MEPs for, uh, uh, in terms of parliamentary activity. And what I, I, I am doing, I am working so hard to keep rebuilding credibility. So every time uh, uh, a, a Brexiteer speaks in my committee, I speak after them. Because otherwise, it's the only British voice in the room. I've taken on uh, the, I've taken on the Brexiteers in the plenary uh, and I'm going to keep on doing that and I've been made sure that I am really really active across loads and loads of different committees on lots of delegations speaking also at lots of European and international conferences as the sensible um, UK voice that is not antagonistic to our neighbours. And I think that's what we need to make sure that we have a huge, huge turnout because a low turnout, you know what I learned when I stood in 2014, actually, is that the Brexiteers, the right wing, the fascists, they claim the empty space. And we let, we let Nick Griffin do that. We mustn't let uh, Tommy Robinson do that and Nigel Farage. Thank you. Second answer to uh, Saj, Conservative. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can the UK rebuild cre credibility and trust with uh, our EU family and partners? Uh, actually, our EU family and partners is just waiting for us to come out of this moment of madness. Uh, and whilst their frustrations occasionally do come to the fore, there is nobody in the EU family that actually wants the UK to leave the European Union, firstly. And secondly, their value, the pragmatism, the experience, the networks, the connections, the links that we bring to the table. We have always played a very positive role of helping provide solutions. I'm talking about within the Parliament now. I know in terms of the wider EU dynamic, we've had our moments in the past, and I'm sure we will have them again, but we're not unique in that way in any sense. Yes, we do absolutely have the ability to do that. You know one thing that would really help somebody like me? How many of you follow me on, say, Twitter? A handful of you. Irrespective of which party you support, if you find one of your elected representatives is doing something you agree with, make it public knowledge. Because believe me, the other side, they follow me like nobody's business. And they make it absolutely known that they fundamentally disagree with what I'm doing. Thank you. Third answer to Chris Lib Dems, thanks. Oh, I remember those I agree with Nick moments, but uh, it, didn't, it didn't do him much good. So I agree with Saj and I agree with Julie. <laughs> um, it'll take us a long time before the term Brexit ceases to be a European joke. Uh, but I think we can, put on a political level, a diplomatic level, I think we can put behind the embarrassment of this situation quite quickly. And a government that wants to do that does it by proper engagement and making it clear from the very beginning that it wants to be fully engaged and it wants to, to, to be constructive. Stop trying to pretend that you know, any, any problem that comes up in Europe, Britain, is, Britain somehow has got an excuse for not getting involved with it. Get engaged, put forward practical ideas, and then back those up by, uh, by proper involvement. And then, you know, before very long, you know, people start to look to us for the, a country that puts forward ideas and is prepared to back them up in that way. And our reputation gradually changes. And, you know, if we really push it, and if governments start to sell that message to the, to the people back here, maybe we can start to move away from, this, uh, from this, uh, this, this, this situation of Brexit to becoming a country which leads rather than leaves. Fourth answer to Change UK, Dan. Thank you. Thank you. Um, fundamentally, um, I believe that we can repair uh, the relationship. Um, I think we'll do it by championing the need to reform the EU. I think that's something that many nations want to grapple with. And sometimes 
the one who puts the head forward first is the one that sort of gets shut down. I think we're the nation that could naturally make the case to reform within the EU. We can say we've come full circle. We now want to be part of it again. We now want to talk about how do we integrate certain aspects and, and, and not others. Um, we have always been a leading nation within the EU, and it's also known that we've been a delicate player in the, in the power struggle that has always existed between France and Germany. And I think that's true now more than ever. I think there are nations, especially in the Mediterranean, that are fearful of what a UK leaving might mean for them. You know, and I do think that that also applies to our Scandinavian uh, nations as well, who see us as that sort of um, you know, referee to some extent through the difficult discussions. I think we're also the, the largest nation that's not in the euro. And I think that's an important group of nations that would desperately want us at the table, um, helping make the case for them and the others. Um, but I think fundamentally, we are a large economy Inside the EU, we make the EU the world's largest economic bloc. Okay. Our partners will obviously want us to be there going forward, and there's more that keeps us together than divides us. Um, fifth answer, UK, EU. Sophie, thank you. Thank you. Well, in terms of credibility and image, let's be hopeful. Rome was not built in one day. And I'm wondering if the European institutions doesn't unofficially agree that UK remains in, in the European Union. Uh, there was uh, some deadlines, end of March, mid-April. Now it's October, which allows us to run and to stand in these European elections. Is it a way of saying, well, we can forgive? We know that there was a, bit, there was a vote in 2016, but we still would like UK to remain with us. Final answer on this question to Jessica Green. Thank you. Thanks very much. I, I think we can rebuild the trust with our European partners, and I think we have to do that. And I agree with Julie, first and foremost. I think that in the European institutions, in the Parliament, we need hardworking MEPs uh, who are active, who are speaking out. Um, I know that our three MEPs, Molly, Jean and Keith, are doing that and building relationships and we've found a huge solidarity from our European partners who want us to stay in the European Union and who want to keep working together. I think secondly that in terms of my own sector in education, that's a huge opportunity to work together with European students. Our university benefits from having European staff, European students in our courses, in our PhD programs. We need to continue to encourage that we look after Europeans who are resident in this country and make sure that we, we reach out and that we offer more on increasing those opportunities. Uh, and then lastly, I think thirdly, I think we have to reform our political system that Westminster as it stands right now is, is a shambles and that this is key to rebuilding trust in our political system in, and in the United Kingdom. And there are many examples, even Scotland, just north of the border, we can see a parliament that functions well. We need proportional representation, we need good politicians, and I think there's serious reform that needs to be done in our political system and in our media. Thanks. <laughs>